Some of my favorite fashion related videos here on YouTube are pickups videos because they actually show what your favorite creators are putting their resources into as it pertains to their personal style. That's exactly what today's video is going to be about and I am very, very excited to share with you some of my favorite acquisitions over the last few months or so. If you're new here, my name is Drew What to Do. It's nice to meet you. Let's get into some of my pickups. Starting off with what I'm most excited for, we have all of the selvage denim that I picked up while in New York City. And I picked up not one, not two, not three, but four pairs of beautiful Japanese selvage denim. The first pair of denim that I fell in love with was a pair that I was introduced to while at Self Edge in New York City. And they are Sugarcane's Okinawa denim jeans. The initial aspect that I really loved about these jeans was the comfort in the thigh and the fact that they are long enough for my frame. One of the most frustrating things that I've run into when it comes to shopping for really any pair of jeans is that they are either too uncomfortable, too short, or too tight around my waist and buttocks region. Buttocks? <laughs> But these on the contrary fit fantastic. And beyond fit, these jeans are just on another level in comparison to the run of the mill modern denim jeans that are being produced from a lot of the just mainstream companies today. The exact cut of Sugarcane's Okinawas are actually modeled after Levi's 1947 version of the Levi's 501. The fabric of the denim is comprised of 50% cotton and 50% sugarcane. And don't worry, a taste test is coming very soon. I also love this snakeskin patch detailing on the back of the pants. I think it adds so much character and really allows you to identify what pair of jeans that you're wearing very quickly. It's a beautiful touch. I've never had a pair of jeans with snakes skin on them and I feel like most people haven't and I really enjoy that aspect. And as someone who's had one foot in the door and one foot out of the door as it pertains to my exploration of Japanese selfish denim, the acquisition of the Okinawas was basically my signal to myself that I am all in when it comes to selfish denim and I didn't just stop with one pair. <laughs> A few quick additional details that I noticed about these jeans were compared to the other denim that I'm going to talk about, this fact fabric in particular has a really neppy surface and by neppy I mean if you look at the actual denim and you look at these kind of like white beads that are appearing all throughout the fabric you would think that that's a result of some kind of hillage in the fabric which it kind of is in a way but in reality nep is just a beautiful detail of I believe uneven cotton being woven into the fabric of some sort you know if you're if you're a denim head fact check me on that but either way Nep in, in denim is something that's so interesting to me and I love that this has this more kind of uneven texture as opposed to some of the other jeans that I'm going to show you guys. And the fabric is a bit more grayish than a deep rich indigo blue. That's something to just make note of. For reference, I picked these up in a 3634. I am six foot three, around 187 pounds, and I typically go with a 3434 with most of my jeans. So I went up in the waist to get the proper size, and the length was really good. Yo, what's up? Future Drew here. Hope you guys are enjoying the video. I wanted to give some more context on sizing for the Okinawas. Now, like I said, I did go up two sizes on the waist for these, and that's what I was told to do at Self Edge, and there's no like bad blood. They didn't tell me the wrong thing. Either I've lost some weight, which I have been on a pretty like strenuous kind of cardio running every day diet, or maybe you don't necessarily need to go up two sizes. It's really gonna depend on where you are with your body type and with your dimensions. I went up two sizes in the waist, and now I feel like I should get my pants tailored. So take sizing advice with a grain of salt. Whether you go true to size or up, I think it's better to lean on the side of going up and then getting them tailored versus going small and then having to return them because they don't fit. Next, let's talk about another shining specimen of denim from Sugarcane. 
These are the sugarcane Hawaii denim jeans. So as the story goes, when we went to Selfage, I was definitely on the hunt for Japanese Selfage denim. And the first pair that definitely took my attention were the Okinawas. But then bro pulled out the Hawaii denim jeans and I fell in love once again. I was basically in denim heaven or like a kid in a candy shop. I had the Okinawas in one hand and then when bro showed the Hawaii's, I just snatched those up too. <laughs> now the Hawaii denim jeans by Sugarcane stood out to me for a lot of the same reasons that the Okinawas did. They were roomy enough in the thigh, they had the perfect length, they had the perfect structure to them and had unbelievable garment construction and a really stellar backstory to match. These are also a 50-50 sugarcane cotton blend with a 14 ounce weight, but stylistically are slightly different than the Okinawas. Color on these is a bit of a richer indigo in comparison to the Okinawas. Like I had mentioned, those are more gray and the Hawaii's are more like a deep rich blue. The back patch is horse hide instead of that snake skin, which I feel like is a nice touch to, you know, bring in some aloha denim vibes <laughs> and the fabric on the hawaii's is a much smoother fabric and some might say a much kind of softer fabric upon initial impression and that's the difference the hawaii's don't have that same level of nep where the okinawas do the hawaii's are a deeper indigo and then they have those subtle design differences like the back patch the back pocket design and some of the other features now after i purchased both of these denim jeans from sugarcane or from from self edge my wallet was screaming a bit but for me i rationalized the purchase a bit by saying if i'm going to be talking about selfish denim i can't just talk the talk i have to walk the walk and i think both of these pairs of denim, while some people may not be able to justify picking up two pairs of selfish denim at a time, if you have the budget and can allocate towards something like the Hawaii's or the Okinawa's, I think they're a great, great entry level pair for people who are just kind of trying to learn more about these uh, Japanese selfish denim brands. For reference, I also picked these up in a 36-34 in terms of the measurements, 36 on the waist, 34 on the inseam, which is a size up from what I typically wear on the waist. Usually I'm a 34-34 and I am six foot three, around 187 pounds. Those are my new sugar canes and I am incredibly excited. Like you guys have no idea how excited I am to kind of fade those up, wear them every single day and just beat them to the ground until they're almost indistinguishable from what they look like right now. That's the that's the plan. But those are my those are the sugar canes. Let's talk about Japanese selvage denim that comes from Canadian brand or Canadian based brand naked and famous now if you're unfamiliar with naked and famous when we first went there in new york city we thought it was a bit more of a tongue-in-cheek kind of selvage denim place a bit of like a joke on selvage denim especially with their logo being well if you see it you see it <laughs> But after purchasing this pair of denim, which we're going to talk about now, and going through the entire experience of being at Naked and Famous, I can tell that the people at this shop really love Selvage denim. The pair of jeans that I decided to go with while we were there are called the Strong Guy Dirty Fades. Maybe you see a pattern when it comes to my design and purchasing decisions as it relates to Selvage denim. I like the pants to be a bit wider in the thigh, that's what these are, or a bit more straight fitting, or a bit wider just in general without falling apart aesthetically, if that makes sense without losing its kind of stylistic integrity. That's exactly what the strong guy denim is. Now this denim by Naked and Famous, and I'm pretty sure the majority, if not all of the denim by Naked and Famous is 100% Japanese selfish denim, but it is made and constructed in Canada. And I wanna say it could be Montreal, but don't quote me on that. There are three things that ultimately led to me picking up this pair of jeans. The number one reason was fit. If something doesn't fit, then why would I buy it? And these obviously fit very nicely when I tried them on, wearing them right now, they fit really nicely. And even if something were not to fit perfectly, as long as I know I can get them tailored like I did with the Yogi's, if you guys know about my like most worn pair of jeans, 
I've had those tailored extensively and now they fit really nicely. Two is price point. When talking about the sugar canes at Self Edge, both of those cost a bit of a pretty penny. But these by Naked and Famous, the Strong Guy Denim, are under $200, which for a entry level pair of Selvage Denim is a much more affordable price point than some of these other ones. And three, I saw the fading potential of this jean in particular in store. They have a fade wall in Naked and Famous. And another cool thing about Naked and Famous is that the flooring of Naked and Famous is actually raw denim carpet, which is cool. But this fade wall showed the fades of the strong guy and they were absolutely B E a beautiful and that's one of the coolest things about raw selvage unwashed denim is how it builds character based on how you wear it where it fades where you stress it how you decide to kind of style it and put it together with outfits for different seasons it'll begin to kind of mold and, and build its own story based on the wearer's story as well now the fabric on the denim for the strong guys is a bit different than the sugar canes it has a much smoother feel than both the okinawas and the hawaii's the color is once again not this like deep rich indigo blue but it's more of like a it's more of like this silvery blue that's kind of the color i'm getting from it like a silver blue if that makes sense not gray but like you can kind of see the little bit of white cotton fabric poking through a little bit and it creates a weird look for the denim for reference i picked these up in a 34 34 which is my true to size when it comes to denim so i can pretty confidently say i would go true to size for yourself or if you can try them on beforehand and base your sizing off of that last but certainly not least we have one of the most legendary denim companies to ever do it out of japan these are samurai jeans and this is a beautiful pair of jeans right here so the reason why that was kind of awkward is because the naming convention of these jeans is a bit awkward i'm gonna have to read it to you these are samurai straight fit jeans with a blend of s500 ax nta indigo and natural indigo basically these are a insanely detailed crafted pair of japanese selvage denim with a specific unreplicable synthetic indigo dye that makes the color the way it is and helps it fade in a particular manner at least from what i'm understanding the stats for this denim are kind of insane if this was a nba draft i would say that the samurai jeans might be a lottery pick if you get the reference you get the reference if you don't it just means that the stats are crazy <laughs> these are a 18 ounce unsamurized pair of jeans the cotton used in this fabric is a blend of what samurai calls their homemade cotton and a traditional fielded cotton blend these aren't raw but they've only been washed once and all of the hardware detailing is just sensational and like I mentioned before, from the research that I'm kind of gathering is that the reason why Samurai is such an amazing denim company is because of the way that the fades kind of develop over time. It's such a unique fading process for most people. I picked these up at the equally famous and awesome Blue and Green in Soho. I absolutely love that shop. And when I was shopping for this denim, I was also told that part of the cotton construction was also organic cotton. I couldn't find that online, but if someone could fact check that, that'd be interesting i'm not sure if that's true but i think maybe they were talking about a different pair of denim and i picked these up and i associated the organic cotton with these but in reality these don't have organic cotton maybe that's the homemade fabric that samurai is talking about that it's organic in some way now i picked these up in a 36 36 for reference i typically go with the 34 34 and most of my just levi's or just other pant measurements and other jeans and things like that so i went up in both the inseam and the waist on cloud nine literally in a denim cornucopia a denim paradise when it comes to these four pairs of japanese selvage denim jeans one additional side note that i really want to hone in on if you're curious about japanese selvage when it comes to a lot of these brands that are actual japanese brands samurai and sugarcane in particular you do want to go up a size a lot of times if you're someone who's a bit taller bigger maybe your proportions are just not what a traditional kind of average japanese male or average japanese female looks like trying them on is the best thing but 
in kind of my experience, going up is a better result than having something be too snug. I'm pretty sure all of this denim will expand a bit as it's worn. It'll expand and then it'll also shrink if it's washed in a particular way. But that's something that I'm going to have to experiment with a bit more and kind of give you my two cents on, on how to take care of your denim and the best way to go about having the most beautiful looking pair of pants that the communities that you're in have ever seen or that the world has ever seen. That's, that's the mission, to have the most beautiful pair of jeans that the world has ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, if you go up in size, you can always have your jeans tailored at a later date. That's just, I think that's a safer bet than too small. You spend a ton of money on the jeans or maybe you invest a decent amount of money on some, some secondhand pairs and then they're too small and it's very difficult to kind of navigate that position that was a ton of denim talk and i plan to do more later on in the year with more videos but let's move on to some of the other pickups in the video so staying on theme with items that came from japan one of my favorite brands that is based in japan is beams and beams plus but i often struggle being able to find and buy beams items in the u.s because the retailers that do carry the brand oftentimes sell out very very quickly and that's where today's video sponsor Bai comes in to help make your shopping experience for Japanese fashion and more so much easier. If you are unfamiliar with Bai, it's essentially a website that allows you to shop on a slew of different Japanese marketplaces all at once and very easily. You have access to Rakuten, Yahoo Japan, and Amazon Japan. Now for today's pickup, I decided to purchase a Bill Wall wallet from Yahoo Japan that is in collaboration with Beams. In specific, I bought this off of the Yahoo shopping section by just searching Beams Plus and then filtering through all the listings until I found an item that I thought was cool. With Bai, you can essentially buy almost anything you want straight from Japan. Once you've found an item that you like, you can go ahead and order it. That item will be shipped to Bai's warehouse and then shipped to you. I received my order in a matter of three, maybe it was four days at most. Sign up using the link in my description to get a 2000 yen discount for your first purchase using Bai. Thank you so much for the support on this channel. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Bill Wall Leather, the company, it has a decorated history when it comes to leather goods and especially leather accessories. In the back of my mind, I've always wanted to elevate or have an elevated version of a wallet. I typically have kind of like a very cheap, more functional and practical wallet than I do something that has a bit more of a stylistic taste to it. The leather on this is absolutely impeccable. There are plenty of card slots for what I carry on a day-to-day -day basis. And for me, I typically carry my air tag in my wallet as well so the ability to kind of put that somewhere in this wallet is a major plus for me i am definitely looking forward to that wallet being my daily carry now one of the footwear brands that has been bubbling up over the last year or so more and more and more has to be hoka and recently i decided to pick up the tour ultra lows and when it comes to hoka i've been seeing them more and more and more but i think the tour ultra low is one of the more kind of sought after or trendy items of footwear by hoka and these are in collaboration with one of the best collaborators just period in bodega there's something about bodega collaborations that always seem to hit they, they just do a fantastic job when it comes to footwear collaborations and none of them feel out of place and i feel the same about these tour ultra lows hoka merrill hiking boots these items of footwear speak directly to the colorado enemy trust me i'm going to be using these a ton also with the tour ultra lows i think that this really solidifies my diversity as it pertains to the type of footwear that i have and, and own within my wardrobe from dress boots to loafers to hiking boots and slides and clogs i got all the bases covered i just need to get some tabbies <laughs> Let's move on to tops and jackets that I picked up. First, I picked up this amazingly beautiful handcrafted artisanal button up shirt from the brand called, actually from a French brand called, and I know I'm gonna butcher this, Bema Tiboa. 
Bama Tibo. I, I have no idea how to pronounce this at all. Honestly, my French is grade school level. I'm not even sure if it's really French like that. Um, I'm not sure if the naming is French, but either way, I'm going to call it Bema. Bema makes some absolutely beautiful, one of a kind, handmade artisanal goods. And I had this shirt commissioned for me for the spring and the summer. I love the weight and the quality of this fabric. It is absolutely just perfect for when it's hot outside i'm pretty sure it's like a cotton linen blend or maybe it's just a linen at that but it is so nice and so light i think these type of shirts in the time frame that we're currently living in will always be perceived as a bit of a more classy timeless look and i think a lot of people like these kind of shirts for the spring and the summer in order to stay it helps you stay a bit fashionable while also staying cool at the same time next we have a brand that i've been a big supporter of for a long time on the channel severed circles and this bay area brand shout out to the bay area shout out to keezy it ain't easy being keezy <laughs> uh, this bay area brand has um definitely i feel like outdone themselves with this recent chore coat that they just made i believe that this coat is also made by hand by the founder Evan I believe it's like a small very small maybe one to two person team at most making these garments and I love being able to support small independent designers and creatives like Evan this brand has less than a thousand followers on Instagram and he's been making clothes and we've been connected since 2021 maybe probably and it's been the last two years in which I've kind of known and had severed circle products and been a fan of what he's doing I love the contrast stitching on the garment. I love the brown color. I don't think it's too heavy. I think the fit is pretty good. As you can see, it kind of has this kind of interesting kind of pop out a little bit, but I still think it's a really beautiful garment. To me, Severed Circles is another reminder to support your friends, support your local artists, support the homies. And even as someone who has 160,000 subscribers on YouTube, which may seem like a bajillion people to you guys watching at home, uh, it's an important reminder that I, still a person i still want to support the people who are making cool things who don't have 160,000, and that's a big big part of this channel last for button-ups we have this button-up by no nationality it is this kind of flowery airy button-up in the same vein as the bema that's not the name of the brand but we're gonna go with that button-up <laughs> now no nationality is no stranger to my wardrobe that is such an alliteration now no nationality is no <laughs> i believe this is called the julio 5452 and for a lot of the same reasons that i picked up the bema top is the same reason i picked up this one it has a very kind of fun playful feel to it a bit colorful light perfect for the warmer days of the year and something i'm gonna be wearing maybe if i go to the beach i know i guess are you guys ready for beach content like ready for like drew drew chilling on the beach telling stories about life on a beach man sometimes life is a beach <laughs> Alrighty, you made it to the latter part of the video i appreciate you immensely for that we have two manga pickups and a lego set pickup which i am equally as excited about to share with you guys if you care if you're a bro or a sis who cares about manga or cares about just like creativity like legos and things like that stick around oh yeah if you're still here comment hashtag pvv which if you don't know just means post vid vid it just means you're in the later gang of the of the video most people drop off so shout out to you so while in new york we picked up two or we i picked up two new mangas that i am both very very excited about the first one being one of the best mangas ever written from my understanding in vagabond i know nothing about this series other than the fact that i believe it's a pretty legendary one and Ever since I bought it in New York on my TikTok, I just keep seeing Vagabond freaking TikTok videos, which I kind of watch, but I kind of just swipe past. And then next, I scooped up this shoujo beat manga called Nana. Oh, Nana. No idea what it's about either. I think the art on the front was like really interesting. And um, someone remind me what shoujo means. I honestly don't remember. But regardless, I'm excited to read both of these. Last but not least, we have this giant Lego set, and you guys are probably like, yo, this dude is a nerd. And you know what? You're right. I am a nerd. Even though I love fashion, even though I'm a little stylistic dude, whatever it may be, your boy has always been a nerd, and um, that's just a part of who I am. I, I, that's, the, that's the thing about like identity, is like, I played Division One basketball, okay? I like 
freaking Japanese salvage denim. I also like Lego, also like manga. I freaking like video games. I like freaking hiking. Like it's it's a good to have different interests. It's good to be multi-interested person. And so this is a part of my multiple interests. You guys probably know I have a whole bunch of Legos and things like that over here and I actually bid on eBay for this particular set because I don't know I thought okay I built some like smaller Lego sets I built some like small medium sets it's time to build a, a bit of a bigger one and see where it goes from there Lauren is maybe not the happiest because she's like where are you gonna put this and I'm like you know what we'll figure that out when the time comes but I'm excited for this um, if you know anything about Lego you get Luke Skywalker you get general you get a whole bunch of guys, okay? They're, they're all really cool. Doesn't matter. I'm excited to build it. I'm excited to just like do something with my hands, be creative, listen to music, and just relax. But yeah, <laughs> if you still if you still like Lego or Lego or yeah, it's Lego, not Legos. I don't know why. That just doesn't make sense to me. But either way, that concludes the pickups for this video. If you enjoyed the video, let me know down in the comments. As always, I'm spreading peace love and positivity in 2023 so that means i'm spreading peace love and positivity to you from me wherever you are in the world have a wonderful rest of your day abianto peace yo what is good post vid vid the actual post vid vid if you stayed all the way to the end end of the video the camera's like really far away so here's a fist bump ah bop that was probably unpleasant i'm so sorry here's another one bop Thank you guys so thank you guys so much for staying to the end of the video. The post vid vid question of the day is what is your favorite and least favorite month of the year? I'm going to have to go with my favorite month of the year being September, being a September baby and um, just knowing that September is the best month of the year, weather, vibes, all that stuff. And then the least favorite month of the year is going to have to be January. Sorry if you love January. That's just the way I feel. Let me know how you feel down in the comments. I'll see you guys next week and um, have a good day, guys. Peace.